Nodes are the core building blocks in Bellship, which is why this video will be dedicated to discussing all things related to nodes. We'll explore how to add nodes to our workflow, examine the anatomy of a node, and cover how to authenticate nodes using API keys and OAuth. Then we'll begin adding more logic to our existing workflow. If you've been following along, then we already showed you an example of how you can add a node from the Buildship library to your workflows. To begin, you first need to identify at which point in your workflow do you want to add your new node. So for example, here we have the Perplexity AI chat node. And if we wanted to, we could add a new node at the beginning, or we could add a new node at the bottom. This brings up the Buildship library. Here you'll find a bunch of pre-built nodes that you can use in your workflows for various use cases. If you want to persist data in a database, then you have a lot of options here for various database providers. If you want to use AI in any form, you'll find AI providers as well. There's DeepSeek, there's OpenAI, there's Claude. And whenever there's new updates to any of the integrations here, the Buildship team almost immediately pushes those updates to the nodes library. You can scroll to find any node you're looking for, or you can also search for nodes. For example, you can start typing the name of the node. Here you can see that Buildship has a strong integration with OpenAI, offering various nodes. But what if you're looking for a node for a specific functionality and that node is unavailable in the Buildship library? You'll be happy to know that you don't have to wait for the Buildship team to publish that node to the library for you. This is because Buildship is sprinkled with AI builder features across the app. In the case of nodes, you have the power to generate your own node with AI. We'll have a full video dedicated to exploring Buildship's AI builder features. For now, just know that there's no limitation when it comes to adding custom functionalities in the form of nodes. Can't find a node that you want to use? Just generate it with AI. Let's talk briefly about the anatomy of a node. And you'll find that it's actually quite similar to the anatomy of a workflow. A node can be summarized in three components. First, the inputs of the node. Second, the underlying logic of the node. And third, the output of the node. Let's use the perplexity AI chat node as an example. First, for the inputs of this node, it expects the instructions. We want to give the perplexity AI search engine, the prompt, this is what we want to search for, and then some additional settings where we can specify which model we want to use. The inputs of a node are meant to influence the underlying logic of the node in some form. What do we mean when we say underlying logic? Every Buildship node will have its own independent logic. If you think about the perplexity AI chat node, here we have this nice and intuitive node that we can just configure via the inputs to get it working exactly the way we want. But in order for this node to actually function, we need to make some sort of API call to the perplexity AI API. We need to tell the API the instructions to use the prompt and which model we want to use. The perplexity API will return a response and then we need to return that response out of the node. All this logic lives within a node. And if you're curious, you can actually preview the code that powers a node in Buildship. You can select the code icon here. And then this will bring up the code that this node uses. It's totally fine if you have no coding experience at all. In fact, it's very rare that you'll need to edit the code of any node. This is because you can also edit nodes with AI. We're just showing you this so that you know that the option is there and that there's no hidden magic here. And while we're here, let's explore how you can configure the inputs of a node. So we can switch to the inputs tab. 
And you'll notice that these inputs mapped to the inputs we have in the perplexity node. And these are fully customizable. You can change the label, the description, the type, whether the input is required or not. And there's also an output tab. This is where we specify the structure of what we expect the output of this node to be. In this case, it will just be the generated text from the perplexity API. When you add a new node to a Billship workflow, sometimes that node will require authentication before you can start using it. One easy way to notice is if you see a key icon. This will let you know that you'll need to add an integration key to be able to use this node. If you watched the previous video, then you already saw an example of how to do this. The Perplexity AI node requires an API key. We previously generated this API key in the Perplexity AI dashboard, and we created a new secret in Billship. A secret is how you can securely store your API keys in Billship. These keys can then be used securely across multiple workflows in your workspace. Let's look at a different example. Let's add the text generator node from the OpenAI group. As you can see here, the first thing that this node is telling us to do is to add an API key. If we try to use this node without adding an API key, then we're going to get an error. So depending on what integration node you're using, you'll usually be required to enter an API key. That's one way of how you can authenticate nodes in Billship. The other way is by using OAuth. Eventually, our weekly news tracker workflow will send us an email with the news report that it generated for us. For sending emails, Billship offers a number of options, but the easiest one is the Gmail send email node. If we add this node to our workflow, you'll notice that it also requires authentication. But this time, instead of an API key, we're required to authenticate with our Gmail account. So let's do that. We can click authenticate here. And if you're signed in with multiple Gmail accounts, you'll want to select the account to use. I'll select this one and just continue. Once you do that, you'll want to select this icon and then just select the Gmail account you authenticated. Once you see the icon changes color from red to blue, that means you're good to go. Since we already added the send email node, we can quickly configure it. The receiver email address is where you want the email reports to go to. So I'll enter my email address. The email subject will just enter perplexity news report. And for the email message, we want to use the output of the perplexity AI chat node. And now you know how you can set up your integration nodes that require an API key or OAuth sign-in. In a future video, we'll talk about a third option in using keyless nodes. These are nodes that integrate with a third-party API that won't require any API keys. You'll be able to use these nodes straight out of the box and any usage of these type of keyless nodes will simply deduce credits from your billship project. Our weekly news tracker workflow is looking good. So far, we've added the Perplexity AI node, which will search for top five news regarding the topics we give it. And we've recently added the Gmail send email node, which our workflow will use to email us the Perplexity AI news report. And before we end this video, we'll add one more piece of logic to our workflow. Here's a question. What happens if the perplexity AI node returns an empty result? As it stands, that means that we'll send an email with an empty body. So let's change that. We want to introduce a condition to our workflow. After the perplexity AI node, we want to add a new node. This time, we'll be adding a flow node. We'll select the branch node. You can use the branch node to control the flow of your workflow 
given a condition. What condition do we want to use here? We want to check if the output of the perplexity AI node is an empty string. To do that, we'll click condition. And there's two ways that you can set up a condition. You can click add condition here, and then you can enter the value you want to test. So you can say the output of the perplexity AI chat node is equal to and the value here will just be an empty string. So for that, you can just enter double quotes. A second way to do this is by switching from condition logic to JavaScript. And we can delete what's currently here. And we can inject the output of the perplexity AI chat node here. And then we can say if it's not equal to an empty string, you can pick and choose what option works for you when setting a condition. For now, we'll just leave it to this. So if it's not empty, then the then side of the branch will execute. Otherwise, the else side of the branch will execute. If it's not empty, we want to move the send email node here. So what we can do is drag the send email node to the then branch. And while we're doing that, we can also drag the flow output there. Now, what do we want to do when we get back an empty response from the perplexity AI node? For now, we can just return any generic text. To do that, we'll add a flow output node. We can use a custom output. And then for the output text, we'll just say, no new news. And that's how we can control the flow of our workflow by using a branch node. We went through a lot in this video, and if you made it this far, then you should definitely consider giving yourself a pat on the shoulder. In the next video, we'll slow down a bit and cover an easier topic in Buildship, variables.